Welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the Zeitung encoding. Now this is a technique that allows us to go from an arbitrary Boolean formula, a propositional formula like the one we have above, and convert it into conjunctive normal form, but do so without an explosion in the space that it's required. Um, so you've already seen a technique to convert an arbitrary propositional formula to conjunctive normal form by doing De Morgan's rules and distribution rules and repeating this process until you arrive at a CNF. This is a different technique that uses the introduction of auxiliary variables, which we saw in the last lesson, in order to create a conjunctive normal form that's linear in size of your original formula. So the first step that we're going to do here, just to draw a connection between what's going on with the auxiliary variables and the formula above, is to draw the parse tree for this formula. So I'm going to try and get the colors right. Bear with me if I have to uh, erase and start again. Um, so at the top level here, we have a conjunction between everything that's on this side here and uh, the proposition T. Right? And so at the very top level, we have a conjunction. Let's see, give myself enough space. A conjunction here with the proposition T, and then everything else below it. Okay. Now, below it, the next stop is the negation of this entire thing. And so the parse tree is going to have a negation here as an inner node, and a single child that represents everything that's inside here. Right? Now, inside of there, we have a conjunction between two different subformula. Right? And so we have a conjunction in our parse tree between two different subformula. And each part of the subformula, I'm representing again with the uh, same colors as you see above as in the parse tree. On one side, we have R or S. And so this is an or between the propositions R and S. And on the other side, we again have a disjunction, an or between the propositions P and Q. Okay, so this is the parse tree. We've already seen how to create parse trees from formula. Um, this is the parse tree for this particular formula. Now, the way that site encoding works is to look at every particular subformula and introduce a new variable for it. So the best way to go about doing this is to look at the the bottom level and work your way up from there. So if we were to look at the very bottom level of this tree and work our way up the leaves here. Let's take a look at uh, this first one on the, the far bottom left, right? And so if we create a new formula, or sorry, a new variable, auxiliary variable, let's call this x1. We say that this auxiliary variable holds if and only if this subformula holds p or q. Right? So we now have one auxiliary variable tied to this subformula, and when we introduce this as part of our logical theory, we know that x1 is going to hold if and only if uh, p or q holds. Right? So similarly, we'll create a new auxiliary variable, x2, and it's going to hold if and only if r or s holds. Right? So now we have two auxiliary formula. And we want to tie these two together, right? So if we look in our parse tree, it's a conjunction between those two subformula, and we want to be able to tie them together. Instead of talking about P's, Q's, R's, and S's, we can now use the auxiliary variables in order to get the job done. So X3, our third auxiliary variable, is going to hold if and only if X1 and X2 hold. Right? So now we're introducing the auxiliary variables in the definition for other auxiliary variables. And this is the trick that we get to play. All of these auxiliary variable definitions are very, very small and compact. And so we continue this process. If we work our way up the tree here. We have x4 holds if and only if the negation of x3 holds. Right? And finally, our fifth auxiliary variable holds if and only if, what do we have here, x4 and t hold. Now what you see in this final one is that we're able to mix auxiliary variables and regular propositions, right? You can combine and mix and match in inside of this definition. Now the colors should match. We start with this original formula. We take a look at the parse tree over here and every one of these new auxiliary variables represents an inner node inside of the parse tree, right? And we define a variable that captures whether or not that entire subtree holds true or false. 
Okay, so instead of working from our original formula, applying De Morgan's and the distribution rule and so on, we can use the Zeit encoding, which says we'll introduce a new variable for every subformula that we have, and we now take the conjunction of all of these. Now, conjunctive normal form is a conjunction of disjunctions. And so if we put each of these individual uh, statements inside of conjunctive normal form, then we can just combine them all by taking the conjunction. Right? So I'm going to show uh, one or two examples of how we put these into conjunctive normal form. And we've already seen a little bit of this in the previous lesson of how we actually map out these auxiliary variables. So let's take a look at, oh, I don't know, x2. Right? And so this means two different things for us. It means that x2 implies that r or s holds which is the same as saying not x2 or r or s. Now this is going to be one clause in our final conjunctive normal form. The other part of this is to say that r or s implies that x2 holds. And if we get rid of the implication, not r or s, or x2, and if we push the negation in, we get not r and not s, or x2, and then if we use the distribution rules, we get not r or x2, and not s and x2. Right? So this is a clause in our final conjunctive normal form, this is a clause in our final conjunctive normal form, and this is a clause in our final conjunctive normal form. Right? So I'll put a little star beside each of these. Right? And we can repeat this process with every one of our definitions of auxiliary variables. Now we have five different variables, they came from the five subparts of our uh, parse tree here, or the five subformula from where we began. And you can see that the growth of this uh, encoding into conjunctive normal form sort of follows in the size of this parse tree. So it's a linear expansion only. Now, if we were to take a look at what happens with the distribution rules and we were trying to use the naive approach for going from an arbitrary formula to conjunctive normal form, what you would find is, uh, let's say, for example, we started with something like, you know, you have propositions uh, P1, and P2 and all the way up to PM, right? If you were to take this and have a disjunction between Q1 and Q2 and all the way up to QN, Right? What's going to happen here is, yes, you can do the distribution, but you're going to wind up with a number of clauses like P1 or Q1, right? a huge number of these. And the total that's going to be down here is equal to M times N. Right? This is very, very big. Now, the, this multiplication, when you're doing this simple distribution, this is what you get, uh, this is what causes the explosion when you convert to conjunctive normal form naively. Now, if we're using the site encoding instead, it's not m times n, it's m plus n. So it's linear in the size of the formula that you begin with. And this is why it's uh, widely employed when we're uh, trying to test whether or not a formula is satisfiable or not. And you'll see in some of the project work that you might do uh, that this is actually used quite extensively in order to encode arbitrary propositional formula into a form that we can actually start to answer these questions with without experiencing this n times n blow up. Uh, so there you have it. This is the Zeit encoding. Uh, it will appear likely on one of the quizzes uh, for you to do both the naive approach of converting to conjunctive normal form, but as well as converting using the Zeit encoding in this more compact way.